throughout history, we have changed the ways that we design the cities and the communities that we live in. And I feel like we're at the cusp of another one of those moments, as we see a rise in technology, a push for sustainability, as well as an increase in wanting to make sure that we create communities that are truly inclusive. But to begin with, I do think we should actually discuss what exactly is a smart city. A smart city, a smart community, um, you know, if, if it really is successful, the power of it is what it does for the people that use it. Digital technology is sort of embedded in every function of a city centre. Um, the way city centre functions, be it sort of the transport, um, the way people live, the way people use space. We're seeing the possibility, um, you know, and how, how it enables people to make the most out of their day um, to attract, basically, to attract people back to the workplace. Um, so I think we've got a long way to go, but it's an exciting innovation that's kind of become standardised in, in our office developments. We need to be engaging with people literally, at the, the teenagers yeah. who are at the cutting edge of IT, technology. Uh, you mentioned the point about sensors. Do they want sensors? What do they want? How do they want to, to function and operate in the future life? And I think we need to be very mindful of that. Mature folk can learn from the younger people. And that's part of, you know, again, bringing the two different demographics together in a city centre, something that you know, we should be looking at more so. Simple things, really, and you kind of think, well, why have we not done it this way before? You know, the local authorities are all struggling with budgets and collection of waste is always a problem and, you know, people on the streets and labour and big vehicles to go and collect waste and all of that. Well, we've got, we're trialling bins with sensors in them. So the bin tells us when it's full. So we only then go and get it when it's full. So I think that's going to be a real challenge for, for cities going forward to understand how all those systems interact. I don't just have to understand the transport system, I need to understand the land use planning around it, I need to understand the digital technology that enables it, um, I need to understand the energy system that's going to support a net, net zero decarbonised transport system. Our first job is not to build buildings, it's going to be to break down barriers. Mm -hmm. So, and that, that we think will actually drive innovation and then actually doing a very uh, taking a very Salford, what I think is a very Salford approach to innovation, then it's part of the collision building approach, which is, right, we've got some spaces, can we do some good stuff? People from deprived backgrounds often do make, struggle to make the leap of faith that they can go to university. Mm. It feels like it's kind of not for them, it's another mm. world. Those people who've come from those difficulties often have got the greatest creativity. So smart cities are about, <clears throat> I think, helping those people feel that they have an opportunity, giving them the confidence. There are occupiers now that we're talking to who are not in, the, in Greater Manchester, who are looking at coming here because of that talent pool. And that's, you know, we, we need to uh, embrace that, possibly more so, and recognise the importance and the increased importance that's going to have moving forward. Is, is cost a factor? Yes. <laughs> Viability. We're thinking more about de-smarting. So can you go natural ventilation rather than full-on air conditioning? Um, and indeed, in the world of mental health, should we get people off their screen? Should there be parts of cities and buildings where there are no, there's nothing smart? You know, you, you can actually get some time off and time out just to chill. Um, and maybe that should be part of smart cities. I think it's a really interesting point on the, on the D smart and natural vent. It's actually technology that then allows you to do it. So by designing the building in a certain way and using technology to understand how the building performs, we can then use natural vent on Eden, which is a project Dan's referring to. We've got the largest green wall in Europe on it. People think it's a gimmick mm -hmm. and it's not. It's actually technology that's allowed us to do it because it's an, it, it performs so many things as well as looking great on a brochure. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's a nice to have. It's the density of it, it means there's a thermal mass to the building, which means that it's far more energy efficient. Technology allows us to capture the water and, and irrigate at exactly the right rate. And the biodiversity side of it, I mean, biodiversity in our cities is, is one of our biggest challenges. Let's, let's, mm -hmm. I mean, that is, that is right up there. What is one thing you want to change in the city you live in or the city you work in to make it into a smart city? If you could do it magically, let's not worry about cost or anything like that. What is the one thing you're like, this needs to happen? Uh, New Bailey, Noma, um, Great Northern, 
all fantastic schemes and they benefit from having good external public realm, which is within the estates, within the ownership, that's maintained by a good management team. And that's, it's superb, it's, it's part of the place. It's not just the building. When occupiers are out looking at a property, they are looking at the external public realm. And those three schemes you have are exceptional. But the challenge we have is then the sort of the, 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 the segregation of the fragmented approach of the rest of the city centre, not just Manchester, other cities, and how that public realm is maintained, looked after. There's obviously a cost attached to that. If you look at Albert Square, which is currently being transformed at the moment, great public realm, St Peter's Square, great job was done. But there's other, it, it's bringing those um, important civic um, you know, estates together, I think make a better place. That's a great point. Public realm is really mm -hmm. important and, and probably hand in hand with that goes, goes transport. And I, think, I think we've got to make um, cities greener from that perspective. Um, invest in transport infrastructure, the cycle routes, um, the connectivity between different districts as Manchester grows. Um, and for me, that's a real tricky one because people are wedded to their cars and um, it's a kind of chicken and egg scenario where a lot of investment needs to be made. You know, the local authorities need to be really courageous in terms of their committed plans to invest in, in these kind of critical infrastructures. Um, you know, Paris, I think, is leading the way in terms of their cycle route, built 50, 50 kilometres of cycle routes through the pandemic. They're investing a billion euros a year on the maintenance and um, creation of more cycle routes to become you know, truly 15-minute cities where people can move around in a sustainable way. I think there's something around humanity and community. We were having a brainstorm yesterday on Great Northern. We're going to try to do a million square feet, 700 apartments and offices and shops. and We were trying to work out who... We, we had this terrible word, tribe. Who's the Great Northern tribe going to be? We're trying to imagine where, what we'd like it to be like. So we were talking about, wouldn't it be great, it's a really inclusive feeling place with a real human grain, small scale, rather than these huge heroic buildings all the time. Try and break it down to small scale stuff. I'm really interested in, to work out how these smart technologies can give people an experience which just measures humanity and, and makes you feel part of a community and, and like you belong and it's a great place. Um, and how can cities feel like villages? I think that Smart Cities is about data and information that's been taken, analyzed, and presented in a usable way so that they, they can actually improve the human experience and harmonize the human experience between the physical world and the digital world. The biggest challenge that I'm dealing with right now is, is digital equity. Um, when you talk about inclusion, you talk about digital equity, when you're talking about younger demographic that may be able to use technology, you can't connect with them because you're not used to that communicating that way. Um, or being able to, if you're at home, the people in the office who are meeting the office, they have a bigger voice because they're here versus when you're remoting in, you're like mm -hmm. sitting in the back row. So that's the biggest challenge that we're, we're trying to overcome. Transport is obviously key, making sure people have access to those sustainable transport services. The transition away from a very car dominated city is going to be quite painful I think but also think about how we lay out our cities to make them more accessible and I think things like the 15 minute neighbourhood is a great way of kind of conceptualising that. I think thinking about the digital overlay to all of that so can people access services without leaving their home um, but also what are the digital services that we provide that give people a better idea of what their options are so that they don't just jump in their car as that's what I know it's there on the driveway um, so things like mobility as a service having um, you know di digital apps that people can really understand what their alternatives are whether that's accessing it remotely whether it's you know traveling by public transport what's the active travel network that that's going to be a key part of the, the equation I think in terms of getting that connectivity and accessibility right you know we've still got massive infrastructure issues um, and yet one relatively small thing that I think has a substantial impact on all of those things for me is about single ticketing mm. about having one ticket transport London style mm. that anybody can pay one price to use any of these modes of transport because they're, they're all different and, and they're all unique to where you live or where you need to go and quite often you need to use multiple modes of transport because the infrastructure is not there yet and you know and that's where we need to get to
I think that technology is really scalable. Like your example of your phone and your little setup you have at your house and, and knowing all that and it scales to a building, it scales to a community, it scales to a city, and to the world. Um, but I think what I'd, I'd really like out of that is that, that at whatever scale it may be, from the human scale um, to, to a community scale, I'd like for the technology and smart cities to be able to adapt and change and be aware of how we use our environment and be able to adjust it so that it can really push out the best human experience possible um, from, from that side. Well, it's interesting to, to hear everyone around the table talking about what, what they see as their, you know, the, 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 the thing, you know, whether it's transport, whether it's open space, which are all really, really important. But I also think it's interesting when we try and say what we want from the future, we have to look back. And if you, you know, I love those kind of future gazing moments that, you know, that we as a society had in the 50s and 60s and we thought we'd all have flying cars right now, you know, when everyone would be, you know, whooshing past the window, but that's not, we're not there, right? And, but what, what are the technology, technology advances that are happening that will really radically change the makeup of our cities? And some of them we've talked about, but the things like, you know, drone corridors, or real, you know, automation of vehicles and corridors that will free up um, real estate that just doesn't exist for us yet. And will free up whether that's to increase the biodiversity or the open space or create great transport corridors. I think that's what I'd love to see is just that real revolution of, of, of the city uh, fabric through technology. So I think it is all about connection. Because we've talked about transport being so important, collaboration, and making sure everyone's on the same page and brought together. So thank you all for coming and connecting and collaborating with this great discussion. And I look forward to connecting with the new IBI space. <laughs>